connected with the stars because A level between universities, this age is really stressful. Um, and if I'm going to school five times a week, going for my A levels, the weekend is the time where I'm either revising or relaxing. And it's ridiculous that I'm meant to now find that time to 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 volunteer. I'm not sure, obviously we have to understand how the scheme's going to work in detail, which we haven't even given yet. But I guess the concept would be that after most people finish school at 18, there would then be this requirement to do a year of either military service or weekend volunteering. Um, yeah, I think, I think a year, the majority of people aim for university or they go into to work. And if you're working five times a week, I think that's what it is. Either if you go into the path of higher education, I just think it, it's why you have no incentive to give up your weekend um, for unpaid work, it's especially if you could be working elsewhere. Is, is kind of been the worst off in the funding that we've received. But I think there's other ways to implement that. I think this, I think there's a lot of fear mongering as well with the fact that we're going to war and a lot of people are worried that um, by doing this there's, there's a chance that they're going to the military, which I don't think is true. But um, I think there's other alternatives to do that. And this is all I can follow here. I think. Um, who have no incentive into doing it, this job properly, um, you're going to get people in dangerous situation, situations if you think about carers and, um, I, you know. I think that's a good point. Martha, before I let you go, let me ask you this. Do you think that, given the fact that we are facing uh, geopolitical risks in the form of, particularly on the European continent, Russia, that is what we're being told, uh, and you have a country like Sweden, which has an uh, 88,000 there needs to be more focus on enforcing, or not enforcing, but f to get the patriotism or get, get young people something to fight for. Interesting, I think, interesting. I think, yeah. you know, there's yeah. not much, as a young person, that you actually want to fight for, sadly. That is very sad. Uh, Martha, thank you very much indeed. Very good to hear from you, uh, because this is about you, and I'm very happy that you called in uh, as an 18-year-old. Uh, very, very good to hear your voice. Thanks a lot for that. Um, Jerry in uh, Whitley Bay. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ali. Um, several points, really. Uh, one is we know we're desperately short of full-time military.
any disenfranchised because they've been they've been sold out of the river. I mean, you've had the Brexit freedoms curtailed, you've had lockdowns, you've had university tuition fees imposed upon them. Uh, it's not exactly a great time to be a young person in many ways. Well, OK. Well, then, I'd like to ask them whether they would like to move to Russia under Putin's Russia and then move in that regime. Because ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Jerry, do you think the government should just be open and honest with us and stop, like, trying to sell us a pump uh, by saying that this is actually about the fact that the military is under-resourced and they need to find a neat way of dealing with it, and that's one of the reasons why we're bringing it up to this. Yes, I mean, I think this is a
15 plus weekend away. Summer's out there. Rent a car with Enterprise. Enterprise rental this summer. Terms and conditions apply. Yay! It's the last few days of the Furniture Village sale with final reductions on sofas, beds, dining. So with style and quality this good, like... tells us that back in the day he played with the mummers and the bubbers for several years. Apparently he found it hard to make friends his own age. We do go first, Tony and uh, Zander. Can we have your medley of first lines now, please? Someone else packed your bags. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to step out of the room.
order the discipline. Uh, you, you are going to get this because no, no, quite right. You said, what about terrorism? What about people who can go along with it all the way and be totally disaffected under this? And what do they do when they come out of their year? You are not you're not going to make a recipe for a cohesive society. What perhaps you do need to do, and I thought the head teacher was brilliant, you've got to start very young with people. People have got to feel they belong. I go to parts of Europe where they lay a wreath with five, six, seven year olds every year as a remembrance, and the army come and talk to children. And from a very young age, you can't take someone of 18 who's had a hell of a life and as the last call has said, you know, doesn't get any weekends off, suddenly they're in the army, but, and then expect them to, to be happy but, and to be part of society. But, but Kate, it's interesting because I just give you the, uh, the sentiments of uh, Ulf uh, Christensen, who's the Prime Minister of Sweden, who said citizenship is not a travel document. I mean, they have this in Sweden. And it works perfectly well. And you just heard from Toby from Austria, who said it was absolutely transformative in his life. Yes, indeed. But, um, I mean, have you been to Sweden? Have you? I have. Yeah, OK. Well, if you go to look at things like the Vasa, the lovely old warship, and you have the history of the guilds and the maritime nation, um, they have different histories to us, Ali. We have a history where a lot of the globe was painted red and then suddenly... But we did it. have it, Kate. We, well, we had it here uh, back in the 50s, so it's not an alien concept to us. We just well, we just disbanded it. We did away with it. It's not like we've never had it before. Um, well, we, <laughs> we, we have cycles in this country, right through from Norman times, and we have the King of Shirtons and... Uh, conflicts and people being mugged in pubs to put in the Navy, you know. There's a, there's a particular form of coercion which is the British way, which is very different. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, Ali. I know. I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, if you're thinking that this, this um, policy is going to somehow help, um, I think you're very misguided. Okay, thank you, Kate, for your perspective. I appreciate it. Um, officer, a first time caller in Green West Richard. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ali. You're right. Yeah, welcome. What would you like to say? I, I just think it's a complete joke. I think the government is a complete joke. I mean, look what happened in Iraq. Look what happened in Afghanistan. You know, we were invading those countries. And look at these countries right now. So, how do you expect people to follow follow a government where they don't even know what they're doing themselves? And the why don't they show a good example and um, sign up themselves to show that they can lead? the army, they can lead us into, you know, whatever they're coming up with in regards to spying a war. I mean, I haven't got a clue, like, but this, this country, it's it's going downhill, but we've got false leaders. We have false leaders, which they don't know what they're, they're expecting a full country to back them up. Uh, on what basis? On what grounds? But, but the thing is, officer, uh, you could always say that about any government of any particular political stripe in history, that... Uh, certain people in the country feel that they don't know what they're doing, they don't agree with them, and they don't want to fight under the banner if uh, a particular prime minister of whatever political background took the country to war. There will always be dissenters and always be people who believe that it was completely the wrong thing to do. I mean, that's just part of life, officer, isn't it? Isn't there some benefit to be gained by introducing a policy like this? Uh, the thing is, there's nothing to gain. This is the problem, because... If you, if that's you look bleak, at it, officer, if... that's bleak. If you, if you look at it, if you look at this, the, what the point I'm trying to make is we went to war with these countries um, like um, Afghanistan. What, what did we gain from it? What did we gain? I want to know what did we gain? We didn't gain anything. The only thing we gained is people dying. Well, what they would say, uh, what was, what they, what they, what they would say they gained is that they dismantled Al Qaeda's operations in Afghanistan and been shielded by the Taliban. It, it's, it's still there. Exactly. So what have you gained? You've only all you've gained you've done, you've destroyed a country and these people, these innocent people, they're fleeing these countries now. Now where are they supposed to go? This this is something that the government okay. haven't ever taken into account and taken responsibility okay. to say, yeah. hold on a minute, we've destroyed these countries. Okay. We need to now do something about it. But no, they're not bothered. I'll say if you park the foreign policy point for a second then you just go on to the domestic policy point about people actually helping out in the national, in the local fire service or something else, would you still have the same reservations? No. Because that is a necessity that needs to be done. Okay. It's interesting. So, so you would not be in favour of going to the military, but you wouldn't have a problem with them doing domestic services. I think that's quite an interesting perspective. Thank you, officer, for your view. Emma, the first time caller in Kent. Warm welcome. Good afternoon. 
I did not do that. So yeah, um, I'm 35 years old, and uh, I saw what the Home Secretary had to say, and I you know, it's more aimed at 18 year olds. Yeah. But I've got full time job, I've got a family, I've got kids, you know, I'm doing well, but I'm overweight. Um, you know, I want to lose weight. I think it'd be a fun thing to do once a month, meet new friends, to learn new skills, if I can help with domestic services like the sport, the sport, the sport, the sport. I think that would be fantastic. I don't think one day a month would make me ready for war, by no means. But if I can go there, learn some new skills, make some friends, help out my local community, uh, I think it's great. I, I think it's something to look to once a month. That's an interesting perspective, then, but maybe you shouldn't be just limited to 18 year olds. But, but even now, I mean, you could become a, an army reservist or you could become a special police officer. Have you thought about these things? Have they ever appealed to you? I mean, the, yeah, I mean, I've got plenty of that special uh, police yeah. officer now. Uh, I mean, I, I like the idea, uh, but yeah. obviously it's hard to make it. It is, that's uh, true. Yeah. If, if this was a magic key slash slash one of the three, you know, it would yeah. be more to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's part of the weight loss program. Very good, Emma, and I like yeah. your perspective. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Uh, Laura, first time caller in Hope. Good afternoon.
especially as an arrest has been made. Seven babies have died following a fire at a children's hospital in New Delhi last night. The cause is not yet known. The estimated death toll from a landslide in northern Papua New Guinea has soared to more than 670. Officials in the Enga province say only six bodies have so far been recovered. And we can see the inch of rainfall in just one hour this afternoon. A yellow alert for thunderstorms is now in force for England and Wales. This means we could see flooding and power cuts. From Global's newsroom for LBC, I'm Cindy Shikandola. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Ali Mirage. two minutes past one and in the second hour i want to talk about the nhs but i want to talk about it specifically in relation to west Streeting, the shadow labor health secretary's piece in the times today which i tell you is really very very public if you have the time to read it please do i'm going to give you a flavor of what it says it says Cultural rot means NHS puts itself before the public. Keep in mind, this is a Labour a potential health secretary, right? That is, it could be in situ in the health department in the next six weeks. And let me just read you this. A couple of years ago, on the 74th anniversary of the founding of the NHS, the phone rang my office. This is West Street. It was NHS England, according to complain about research we put out, showing the number of people dying while on waiting lists. They weren't calling to complain about the accuracy of the story or tell us about their plan to do something about it. They called to complain that we had spoiled the NHS's birthday. It was Nigel Lawson who described the NHS as the closest thing the English have to a national religion, with those who practice it regarding themselves as its priesthood. As I've been arguing for more than two years now, the NHS is a service, not a shrine, what matters is what it does, not what it is. What the NHS has done in relation to contaminated blood, the biggest scandal in history is truly shameful. The cover-up was as bad as the crime, it, it, inflicting injury upon injury. I mention a phone call because it is a morbid symptom of a cultural rot that places protecting the reputation of the NHS above protecting the public. Now, I just, just pause and think about this for a second. This is a... Labour health secretary. And he, get, he, he goes on, he goes on. He says, this is about historic injustice, but ongoing scandals from failing maternity units to monsters like Lucy Lecky, recognising failures shouldn't be regarded as heresy, yet brave whistleblowers are hounded out, bullied and silenced as heretics. What he's talking about, what he's talking about is actually introducing a policy of radical candor and reforming the NHS as a national religion, right? This is West Street in the shadow of the mountain. He's also talking about the culture being set from the top. The denialism of the crisis in the NHS starts with the health secretary and the prime minister, he says, and he talks about the fact that they're blaming our staff for being on strike uh, for, the, for the massive backlog that we have in the NHS. But he also says, for the scale of modernization required, the NHS needs opening up a culture of transparency and a reforming mindset. And he wants to go in to poor hospitals and send in turnaround teams. That's one thing he wants to do. Clearly, he also wants to have more appointments, 40,000 more appointments a week, and all of these things. But the interesting thing about this, for me, is the fact that you a Labour shadow health secretary saying that there is a rot in the NHS when it comes to actually calling out misdemeanors, rot and scandal. That, I think, is worthy of debate. So my question to you is this. Is our overprotectiveness of the NHS blinding us to its failings? Is our overprotectiveness of the NHS blinding us to its failings? Uh, at 345 606 and you can just 8485 ask Alexa to send a comment to me. So do you mind your thoughts on this?
is a service, not a shrine. I mean, do you, clearly we have a lot of affection for the NHS. We could see that back in the Olympic uh, opening ceremony where the NHS was, was out there front and centre, and we love the NHS, we all do. Do you think we, uh, it's blinding up to some of its, its some very severe failings, including some of the scandals and cover-ups that have gone on in recent years? I don't think that's a useful term and language because I think cover-ups have happened in other aspects of public service. I mean, the post office scandal being a classic example of that. Yeah, but that doesn't mean they're not happening in the NHS, David. I mean, you can't do no, that. I'm, I'm not saying they're not, but I'm saying that actually the politicians have been part of the problem. Yeah, but and, you and see, indeed, David, are you not exhibiting exactly the kind of thinking that West Greeting is trying to root out here by living in denial? Hold on, hold on. We're, we're they often in program. Okay. We'll be late in their lives. So that's I'm sorry, Streeton is part of the problem with the double associates who are campaigning massively about the issue of physicians associates um, and actually people not being able to access a GP basically and that got passed through without any opposition from any of the parties. So one of the fears we've got in <laughs> scandal is people being misdiagnosed and not actually getting to see a doctor. It isn't just you, the scandal is not just about the NHS, it's about lots of other workforces but also so do you think he's got no case to answer? Do you think this is all like being made up no. of or the figment of his imagination? No, not at all. No, I think the action of the action should be seen founder of the NHS, absolutely died in the war, uh, Labour, uh, a person. So maybe Streeting feels that he's got the the, the, the political cover, the, uh, the, the ability to say this where other people can't. But I think it's really, really profound what he's saying. And I don't think, I think David Nicholl, quite honestly, who we just heard from, uh, is living in a little bit of denial there. The, the, the argument here is not to try and deflect attention to say, well, it's the politician's fault, or there are other, uh, other, other services that are failing. Of course there are. We know that. And politicians also take part of the blame. No one's denying that. But to, to not deny that is to, is, is to not also say that there are serious failures in parts of the NHS where misdemeanors and downright flagrant um, breaches of uh, trust uh, and delivery uh, for service for patients have occurred. They have. And I say this is someone whose parent, whose mother, was an NHS doctor for 40 years. So I don't think it's a
NHS blinding us to its failings? Is our overprotectiveness of the NHS blinding us to its failings? 0345 606093, text 84850, ask Alexa to send a comment to LBC. I want to hear from you if you have worked in the NHS as a doctor, a nurse, a care worker, a member of staff. What have you seen? What is your experience? Um, tell us. Uh, if you have tried to blow the whistle yourself, how you, how were you treated? Have you seen other people trying to blow the whistle? How were failings dealt with, if you will? If you're a patient and you've complained, do you feel that the NHS deals with it properly, uh, despite the fact that it's not or do you feel, as my speaking was, that in many cases it's completely failing to deliver for the British public? However much we love it, right? He loves it, I love it, we all love it. But that doesn't mean just because you love something or love someone, you can't point out She has no EU roaming fees this year. Oh, funny up. It's be connected. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Terms apply. See tescomobile.com slash home from home. Would you believe it? Something from the bank you can actually look forward to reading. When you join Club Lloyds from Lloyds Bank, you get to choose from a range of exclusive benefits, like an annual subscription to one of your favourite apps. It's the bank account. Something for everyone. Read more about it? Search Club Lloyds for an inclusive bank account with exclusive benefits. £3 monthly fee may apply. Account opening subject to status. UK residents 18 plus. Cruise charming streets. Find empty beaches and discover the countryside's hidden gems. Summer's out there. Rent a car with Enterprise and unlock it for less. Prepay and save 10% on your Enterprise rental this summer. Book now at enterprise.co.uk. Ali Mirage on LBC. With Enterprise, experience more with a rental car and unlock your summer getaway. Ali Mirage on LBC, uh, 119. Uh, is our overprotectiveness of the NHS blinding us to its failings? 0345 973 text 84850, ask Alexa to send a comment to LBC. Why I'm asking you about this, because West Greeting has got a very, very punchy piece. In today's times, and cultural rot means NHS puts itself before the public. He wants to be the shop steward, championing your views and your uh, voice uh, ahead of what is happening in the NHS and NHS staff. And is basically saying it should be a service, not a shrine. What, it matter what matters is what it does, not what it is. What do you make of that? Do you think he's bang on the money? Do you think he's being unfair? 0345 6060 973. Uh, Des in Hampton, good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, Ali. I, I get very fed up when um, 
had conversations with friends and saying, look, the, 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 the NHS is, 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 is the end of the world, you know, it, 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 it's free. I said, look, it, look it, the service is appalling and we pay for it through our national insurance contributions, but it is not fit for, you know, it's not fit for purpose. I've seen close relatives uh, uh, die, you know, being apparently looked after the NHS, and I actually made successful claims for their full service. I mean, on, on, when I actually visited them, on a single occasion, when I ran the buzzer for a nurse to come, a nurse came, which is appalling, not on a single occasion. Now, what's required, uh, Ali, is, is I, I, I'm, a, I'm a toy, I, I'm a toy, I'm a toy, but I think what's required to sort of come out is the massive, massive injection of cash in the NHS. Now, no one can say the coffers are empty, but the way to do it, as far as I'm concerned, for Labour, is to get, get in power and be brave. So, listen, guys, what we need is a load of money. The way to do it is people like me have stuff, but my net asset is about six million, okay? So, I'm quite wealthy, I'm not hugely wealthy. Now, if it's two million on the top of the asset, there's no massive difference to my lifestyle. You know, it's just like a change what I do and how I live my life. So, what's the point is a brave one off new debt tax. Get that money in, okay? Be brave, take the money, and a massive gesture of cash. The only way. Well, well, I'm disappointed uh, to tell you, uh, uh, Des, that um, a West Streeting is not going to be doing any of that because he's actually saying quite openly that he's not going to give in to doctors' uh, unions uh, on uh, NHS pay demands. So he's basically telling the NHS doctors, uh, "I'm going to be a shop steward for patients and the, and and, um, and 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 as health secretary." And he's saying, "Look." And I quote, I think one of the reasons why we've seen so many staff striking in such numbers is not because the demands haven't been met, but actually the lack of respect and care they've been shown. So I know it's a hard message for junior doctors to hear when I say we can't afford 35% at this stage. He ain't going to get more, no more money. Yeah, he's outplayed, but he's trying to be out touring the tools. That's what he's trying to do in order to get power. I said, I'm instinctively a Tory. It's obvious what's required, okay, and the, the Labour needs to be brave. Let's right? say so when you say why not get the power, okay, then do the right thing. You know, a one-off reset tax. Now, the thing is, people like me, right, form a very, very small percentage yeah. of the UK's population, okay? So if you get the big of all cars, it's not going to affect the vast majority of the terms of voting, okay? So that does not set in my absolute sort of category, okay? Okay. So Tax, okay? It won't affect the, 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 the fact that they're going to get in. It's just a small percentage okay. of the population. Okay, Des, thank you very much indeed. I'm sure the Treasury will be more than happy to take a, a check on a voluntary basis from you of two million quid if you've got a spare two million lying around. Uh, my question to you is this uh, Is our overprotectiveness of guess blinding us to its failings? So 0345 6060 973. We're going to come back to your calls on that in a moment. but. Uh, First joining me um, on the back of our last conversation last hour about uh, the Tories wanting to introduce mandatory national service is uh, Sir Ian Duncan Smith, former leader of the Conservative Party from 01 to 03 and former cabinet minister uh, from 2010 to 2016, an MP for Chingford and Woodford Green. Very good afternoon to you, Sir Ian. Uh, what do you make of Rishi Sunak coming out with this policy a bit uh, out of nowhere today? Uh, actually, no, it has been discussed. I, I don't know about in cabinet, but I know that there's a long discussion going on at the moment has been for some time about the need for uh, there to be a more constructive way in which people having less school or going to college, etc., have a greater structure allowed to get involved both in their communities, but also um, to get involved with the military, if that's what they'd like to do, to get a sense of what the military is all about, and to get a real feeling for the way that discipline works and how you structure life. But um, in the last hour, you know, I had two callers, uh, Martha and Laura, both uh, young people, who said, hang on a second, right? We, we, we have been sold down the river. Our futures are basically compromised on the back of uh, Brexit, uh, COVID, uh, university fees, all of these things. We don't feel we've got a stake in society. And now we're being told to work on the one weekend a, a week where we're, where we're probably off, when we've got a lot of other things to do, including putting crust on the table, because we're not all just sitting around waiting to go to university. Well, I just don't see why anyone should be negative about their lives. This is all about being positive. I mean, I was in the army for a while. I have to tell you, it taught me a huge amount about structure, self-discipline, understanding how to deal with people. All of that was really, really good. And also, you know, I worked with, with uh, a community groups and charities. I set up the Centre for Social Justice. We have people working all the time with community groups all over the country who will tell you so much about their communities you need to know. Uh, you know, the negative way, you can look at negatively anything you like. 
But the reality is that these experiences that you will gain will, will be absolutely brilliant in helping you in future careers, etc. Uh, no one's been sold down any river. Uh, there, is, uh, there are real prospects out there for people, and you need to look and be careful about it. But the main thing is if you have the right attributes, uh, then people will want to take you. And I think these, um, this whole prospect is about giving people structure, self-discipline, understanding how to deal with people. These are invaluable. Things are far more important than levels per se as they are. It's about people to people, and that's the important part about this. Do you think that Terry should still actually call the election now, sir? I don't have any other view of what we're back on fighting at the moment with an intention of trying to win it. And that's really what we're about. Let me also ask you this. When I was standing as a candidate in Watford many, many years ago, you very kindly came to Watford to support me in the school. And I remember your chief of comms, uh, when you were addressing the students in the school, uh, said to me, Ali, please can you move behind uh, Ian because he's standing under a sign uh, entitled Exit. At the time, uh, you were the quiet man who was turning up the volume and you were having a lot of problems with your back benches. I just thought you were pointing at Senator Chief. Street is doing such a great job of making clear 
And it's about time we stop worshipping the shrine, as you quite rightly say, and look at the Lord's service. The only thing I would say to you is that if we're screeching any saints, and St. Labour is about being upfront about the need for fundamental reform of the NHS, we've had so many fundamental reforms of the NHS. Remember Andrew Lansley, his fundamental reform that I'm not even sure anyone in government noticed until he tried to do it. We've had reform after reform after reform. The service outcomes haven't exactly increased at all. The life expectancy hasn't increased either. And morale, in many cases, is right on the floor. Do we need another reform, Joe? Is that what we need? Well, I think what we need is, is someone with a bit of gumption and guts to not keep listening to unions and various bodies, simply asking for more money and be a proper leader. Well, uh, everything wrong in this country is lacking in leadership with taking taking the flack that goes with it. But the moment there's any criticism from all these bodies, they cower. And it's about time we got got a leader that stepped in there and said, no, this is the direction we're going. We're getting accountability. We're going to stop the overspending that's going on throughout the NHS and actually really have the gumption to follow through, uh, Ali. Okay. Well, they cover. Yeah, Jerry, thank you very much indeed. But you can't accuse West Reading of not being direct in what he wants to do. He's certainly being very open about it. Jerry, thank you very much indeed. Um, my question is this. Is our overprotectiveness on the NHS? us to its failings. West Street in case of this, do you? 0345 6067 and text on 8485. Ask Alexa to send the call to LBC. This is Ali Raj on LBC. News headlines and send it to Kendall. Labour's Liz Kendall has told LBC the Conservative plans to bring back mandatory national service are a headline grabbing gimmick. Under the scheme, 18 year olds could sign up for a year in the military or a year of weekend volunteering. The Lib Dems have described it as desperate. 227 migrants crossed the channel in four small boats yesterday, according to Home Office figures. It brings the total number of people arriving in the UK so far this year under 10,400. The UK's tallest roller coaster has closed for four days, less than 48 hours after opening. Thorpe Park says unforeseen circumstances have led to the suspension of Hyperia. LBC weather, a mixture of sunshine and heavy thundery showers, a high of 21 degrees. This is LBC. Buy parts of a new wind farm and generate your own low-cost greener energy with Ripple. Joining Ripple could cut your energy bills every year for decades. Without the hassle of getting solar panels installed onto your home or business. Your own energy to wherever you live. Even if you move home. That's real climate action to be proud of. Join now to be part of our next wind farm. Welcome to Ripple. Ripple Energy. Save on every range in the Oak Furniture Land Big Weekend. With many products now at their lowest price ever. Like a stunning sofa and luxurious bed for basking in bank holiday bliss. Or a statement dining table for making every get-together unforgettable. And right, enjoy three years interest-free credit and no deposit to pay from just 499 The Oak Furniture Land Big Weekend ends Monday. Finance decencies apply. Oak Furniture Land is a credit broker, not a lender. Offer ends 27th of May. Welcome to Avon and Inconvenience is a good thing. We'll only deliver to your area once a week. It reduces carbon emissions. Our food costs a bit more. We pay farmers fairly. And our broccoli won't last us. A... So don't do preservatives or unnecessary plastic. An inconvenience store is better for the planet and tastes better too. Join the thousands of people choosing inconvenience. Search Abel and Cole and order groceries online today. Difficult tastes better. Abel and Cole. Sometimes, it's the little gestures that make the biggest difference to someone's day. Noticing when a friend needs a hug, remembering their special occasions, and just reminding them, I'm here for you. At Sing Flowers, our bouquets, plants and gifts are specially selected to put a smile on the face of all of your loved ones. A little gesture that makes a big difference. Zingflowers.com. Amazing. Every time. McDonald's are making small improvements to our classic burgers. They're now 100% British and Irish beef patties, so they're even juicier. And we're serving them butter for melting cheese. All in new toasty buns. The classics. Now a little more. Mmm. Comparison with prior classic burgers. Served after 11am, subject to availability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ali Mirage. 
on LBC. With Enterprise, get off the beaten track and get more from your holiday with a rental car. Roger on LBC, it's uh, 1.34. Is our overprotectiveness of the NHS blinding us to its failings? 0345 6060 973, text 84850, ask Alexa to send a copy. Obviously, why I'm asking you about this one, because West Streeting has got a piece out uh, today in the Times uh, saying a lot of things, basically saying that the culture is set from the top, that the government ministers are in denial, but he also takes real, real aim at the service itself and talks about the uh, scale of change and modernisation is huge and the NHS needs opening up a culture of transparency and a reforming mindset and he says it is a service, not a shrine. What do you think? 0345 6060 973. Uh, Terry and Wembley, good afternoon. Where look, we know that there are issues. We know that there are issues with infected blood. We know there are issues yeah, in Mid Staffordshire. Yeah. We know that there are issues in yeah, some maternity yeah. units. But not all parts of the NHS are broken in this. Thing. Exactly, exactly. But there are. There's almost a fear of, like, like you said earlier. We love the NHS. Mm -hmm. People must criticise it. Yeah. 
we can criticize it, which is still loving. You can criticize things you love, but you can, of course you can. And we, we should criticize it when he deserves criticism. Okay. I'm not criticizing the doctors and the nurses. They're wonderful people. But it, it, I think it lies with the strategy and the, and, and well, the, and the health of them. Well, I mean, but they're not all wonderful people. I mean, we need to be clear. They're not all wonderful people because, no, it's not so right, right. Because because you've got you've got the Lucy Letby case. You've got um, true, the infected true. blood. You've also got uh, you've also got maternity units. So a lot of, and I deal with them every every week. And I tell you, the people I've interacted with largely have been absolutely first class, first class care, first class consultants. We're very lucky, but they're all universally brilliant. And that's something else we need to accept. Terry, thank you. Thank you for your call, Terry. Really appreciate it. John in Enfield, good afternoon. Hi, Lily. Um, the manager that he was talking about tend to be people that have got no training in the medical industry. Mm. What, what we need is people that are from the bottom up, that voted, like the matrons and things, to actually manage it. And these managers are often on, on your two or three, four, five hundred thousand pound salaries, yeah, which is the core of the problem. And uh, if you look at the Lucy Lepby scenario, it, it was they were more concerned about uh, protecting their image rights. And uh, well, the the whistleblowers. whistleblowers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, in terms of whistleblowers, what I was thinking of, uh, not just the NHS, but uh, you know, any in industry, uh, there should be uh, like an award system there yeah, for the, uh, the whistleblower. And the best thing that's already in place is that guess what? It's the New Year's honours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they should make it mandatory that every time there's a New Year's honours, yeah, whoever, whoever from where was a whistleblower that could possibly save a lot of money. They should actually get, uh, uh, I don't know, the CBE, an MB or not, I don't know. But with, with that go, we should give up a, a place uh, of either a crony politician getting it or a crony civil servant getting it. No, I don't disagree with you at all, John. Do you think whistleblowers are treated with contempt uh, by organisations, including the NHS, because I do? For example, if we make it ma mandatory that they get a New Year's honours honest this year, that will make everybody think twice I'm about doing something. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that major whistleblowers well, should be an honour. That won't happen to exit issues, but, but I do understand that once you do have the brain to do, should be absolutely written. Right. John, thank you for your call. Another job in Christchurch in uh, Dawson. Good you know. It has to be 
it, it has to be. It, 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 we, we, well, we're once proud of it, but it, we, it has to be made us. It, we always got to look to serve the people. I mean, there's just so much colour. I mean, we just know. So we know you've got the King's family down many several years. And it's just. It's just Like that. 